So welcome along to the uh, fifth video in our series, and this is the, I guess, the second video where we're really looking in detail at digital marketing. I suggest you go back and watch the, the previous four videos um, to get a real handle on how you're gonna market and grow your business um, and, and set up the groundwork for that. But let's talk about, I guess, where we're up to. So I said, this is the, the fifth video in our sixth video series. Um, you'll notice there have been worksheets, we're going to do exercises, a whole bit of additional resources including webinars um, on this material uh, that you'll find as part of the resource material. So digital marketing, you know, it's really important and we put together a, a seven step digital blueprint um, you'll find on this on the web page you know, for this video. Um, so, so get a copy of that blueprint and work it through. So, so far we've worked through your digital marketing strategy and a website that works. Today we're going to talk about email marketing and a little bit about SEO. Um, so, so let's just take the, take the time to do that now. Now we've given you a digital marketing plan um, and you'll find this uh, in the resources and up to date we've sort of got you to fill through these sort of issues and cover off these sort of things. So we want you to think clearly about, about these sort of things. But next, we're gonna start talking about, about how it all starts to fit together. And, and step three is called email marketing is the king. And there's a really good reason for that, that social media is a great place to contact people and connect with people. It's not a great place to be doing your selling. And email is a great vehicle, and it's still the preferred um, mechanism for um, all the gurus out there uh, in this space, um, email marketing is still the king. So let's talk a little bit about email marketing. So the key elements of email marketing, you need to set up a regular email newsletter. You can use email autoresponders to nurture. So autoresponders are set up on your website or in the software that supports that so that when people flick you an email or, or sign up to something, they, you can actually send them a sequence of emails. And for this video course, if you signed up from the start, you will have got a sequence of emails. Well, that was all driven by autoresponders, okay? Um, and you can use autoresponders to nurture people uh, um, as they move through your process, okay? You can, you can then create a sales or appointment-focused call-to-action email. All right, so we've been nurturing these people for a while and then we can, we can hit them with a sales or appointment focus call to action email that will pick up a proportion of the people that are interested in doing something more with you. And that's how it works. So we set up a regular e email, we, we contact them regularly to nurture them and keep them going and then we make an offer to them. If they take up our offer, then they move into another section of our sales funnel. If they don't, then we just keep nurturing them and keep, and keep looking after them until they're ready to buy from us at some point in the future. So email newsletter. So send regular email newsletters to your prospect list as part of the nurturing process. So ensure your newsletters are part of your 90-day contact program. Now, the 90-day contact program is something that you can download separately from our, our website, um, but make sure that you, that you do get a copy of the 90-day con contact program. It is absolutely critical to making this thing work. Autoresponders. You can establish autoresponder sequences to automate follow-up. Yeah, so registering to download a lead magnet triggers a series of follow-up emails. They're all driven by autoresponders. Okay, they're a great tool um, and uh, you can find them in various mailing programs. Um, MailChimp, a um, whole bunch of others have, have autoresponders. Okay, so look up autoresponders as they can automate the, the important parts of the follow-up in your business. The sales call to action email. So develop a compelling sales focused email. A nine word email is a great thing. So it can, it's got to be simple. Something really simple like, um, uh, like, are you interested in growing your business? Question mark. That's all you have to say. You know? And you might just have business growth in the subject line. Dear, put their first name or, or hi, first name, whatever your, whatever your thing is. Hello, whatever it is. Hello, Russell. Are you interested in growing your business? Question mark. Regards, Russell. You know, regards, Russ. Regards, Frank. Regards, whatever your name is. Mary, Josephine, doesn't matter. Plug that in there, and then and then um, and then wait for the responses. Some people will take you up on it, and then you can start a conversation with them. They will come back to you, and you can start a conversation. That's the whole point of it. Okay. So in your digital marketing plan, it's really important that you understand this this flow through the through the channel partners which we did in the last video but you also start to get a sense for 
for which platforms you're going to use and how you're going to move ahead, what your call to actions are, all that sort of stuff. So, so think about think about the calls to action and the things that you want to build um, in your um, email. All right. So driving traffic to your website, driven. If you know, you can take them there from social media, from other places. But if you, one of the key things to think about is SEO or search engine optimization. Okay. Um, so SEO is, um, I guess, the important part of SEO is to make sure that you, your SEO is focused content on your money pages. All right. So so think about pages where where you know it's called as money pages, but 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 think about pages on your website that can be blog articles or whatever that are really highly valuable. Make sure that you've got your SEO focused on delivering people to those pages. All right. Basically, you want a list of key phrases, phrases even that people are searching for. Okay, and and a plan to increase domain authority in this space. Now, my recommendation is that you don't try and do this that yourself. That you engage with um, some organisations that can help you build SEO because it's quite a structured process um, and it's not a hit and miss process. Okay, so my advice is find somebody good um, to um, uh, to help you with your SEO. Okay, so focus SEO focuses the key pages of your website, your home page, plus any other phases that, that convert and generate revenue. Um, you need to understand your keywords, all right? So what keywords are your target market using to search? So you can use tools like the keyword tool search, okay? So it will help you find the keywords that your target market is using to search for your products or services. And you can start to make sure you've built those into your website and you've, they're they're a critical part of your search engine optimization plan. All right. Now, once you start to get your SEO happening, you can things use things like AdWords, Google AdWords, to drive people to your business. Okay. So we can use people like, um, and I, my advice here is you can have a bit of a play with it yourself. But if you really want to get serious about it, use the seasoned professional to lift your SEO ranking and then to help you drive a Google AdWords campaign that brings business to your website. Okay, And that's why our website's really important because it's the conversion tool for any of the traffic that you get. Okay, So, so I guess the key thing, thinking about SEO, um, backlinks and that sort of stuff is, is places where you can, where you can um, or do PR, Backlinks are places where you can post articles and some of your blog articles and other things and then link them back to your website. That gives you a lot more power um, in, the, in the process um, and in the SEO and in the Google um, algorithms because they're basically a third party recommendation or a second party recommendation of your products and your services or your, your articles that you're an authority in your area. Okay, so the backlinking strategy is really important. So. Just stop and pause for a second and say, okay, how can I use email and SEO more effectively in my business? Okay, stop and have a think about it. Press pause when you're ready to go again. Press play and off we'll go. Okay, welcome back. So I hope you've got some good actions there. So, so step five is to engage in social media. Okay, so social media is really um, a, a new phenomenon, probably in the last decade, um, and it's growing. And there are different versions and different models every time. And there's a couple of key things with social media. Some key social media elements are: we need to develop a social media strategy. You need to have a clear strategy for how you're going to approach social media, and there are some great people to help you do that. You need to select the social media platforms that are appropriate for your target market and, and for the services and products that you offer. You need to build profiles on those social media websites. You then need to build awareness, and that's by connecting, following people, sharing content, liking their stuff, making comments, all that sort of stuff. Build awareness of you and what you're doing. You need to build credibility, your own personal credibility, by being involved in discussions, mentions, you know, posting unique content on them. So it's really important that, that you're clear on what your social media strategy is and how you're going to, to use it to your best advantage. Use this sort of simple infographic here to think about, you know, are you going to use social media, just focus on SEO, are you going to use social, sorry, um, 
search engine marketing. So that's about you know Google AdWords and those sort of things. Is your website there? You know, is it is it mobile and tablet friendly? Do you have landing pages that people can come to that are, that are good sales processes? And then think about your 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 social media platforms that your target market will be on, and is it where they go for um, for uh, information? So, do you have a blog? The tick should be yes. YouTube for video, really important. Are you going to use email marketing? Yeah. Now, you're going to use webinars, possibly. Um, where are you going to post this stuff? Pinterest, Snapchat. Are you going to develop your own apps? Do you going to do podcasts? Use Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. These are the main things we're going to do thinking about. Just use this as a checklist to tick off which bits it is that you need to focus on. Okay? Make sure you've got it covered. Now, um, with social media, be really careful that you pick, you know, one or two platforms that you're really going to focus on because it can be very distracting trying to deal with Facebook, links in Instagram, Twitter, you know, Snapchat, Pinterest, um, you know, and TikTok or whatever else that's out there, out there at the moment. So think very carefully about about these things. Okay. So what social platform is right for you? comes back to that that part of the model four questions I'd ask you who's your target market what do you sell where do they hang out looking for your product or service you know if you're selling stuff um, that that people won't go looking for on Facebook then don't be on Facebook if you are a business to consumer marketer then Facebook's probably an appropriate place as maybe you know Instagram or something else if you're purely a business to business um, offer then you know I would think going on to some of these other platforms could be of dubious value to you all right and be be wary of the vanity measures on some of these things where you're just looking at likes and things at the end of the day you want to get business out of it and then the other question is how targeted can you be on that on that um, particular platform how targeted can you be in terms of extending your reach out to your out to your client base once you've got those four questions answered, then you'll be able to work out which platforms you should be on. All right. And here's, a, I guess, a quick summary of them. There's new ones coming up all the time. Um, you know, B2C is business, business to consumer. Um, you know, B2B is business to business. So, so you know, for any argument's sake, you know, if you're on YouTube, it's great if you're business to consumer and, biz, and or business to business. It's fantastic for millennials and it's just full, full of video. Okay. So, um, you know, think about, think about these various um, social avenues, social platforms that you can be using to get in contact with your target market. So the recommendation is pick two, maybe three platforms and focus. You know, for argument's sake, you might just pick LinkedIn, webinars, and YouTube. Okay, that's all you're going to do. All right, so then you need to generate some content for these platforms. To make it systematic, this is the key thing with it. Consistency is really important in this space because it builds a reliability part of your trust equation. If you understand what the trust equation is, go back and watch the first part of video one um, where we talk about one of the key components and one of the key concepts to understand about marketing is this trust equation. Okay, so how do you do it? Um, how do you do your social media stuff? You can do it yourself, write your own content, getting out there. You can use contractors, so you can use your virtual assistant or freelance copywriters and those sort of people to, to do it. And then there's also third party, again, who do that. These could be industry-specific newsletter services and stuff where, where they'll write um, a generic industry-specific um, articles and blog, and blog posts, and you can take those and post them on your website or on social media. Where do you get your ideas from? I think a great way is to brainstorm 50 issues that are impacting your clients and then write articles around those sort of things. Borrow ideas and topics from other blogs. Don't plagiarize them, but if you come across a good idea and go, wow, that's, that's a really good idea, I've got a slightly different take on that, so I'm going to use that as a way to get my take. So, so, so I'm not saying you copy other people's work, that's just purely wrong. What I'm saying is you can use their work as inspiration to come up with ideas and topics of, of, of your own. You know, you might come across a YouTube video that you like, and then write a blog version of it. Okay, um, but you know, with all this stuff, you know, get your ideas from where you get your ideas. Just don't steal other people's work. All right. So I want you to press four. Let's pause now and tell me 
what is your social media strategy? Okay, I want you to write it down. I want you to think it through. I want you to go through that infographic and tick off the bits and pieces that you're going to focus on and what you're going to do. Okay, when you're ready, press play and we'll go again. Okay, now I want to talk to you about, about, about expanding into a bit of broadcast media. So you can just do your standard blog posts and that sort of stuff. But if we start to use some more media, we start to get a lot more power in our social media interactions and also in our emails and other things. So how can we do that? Well, there's a number of elements you could use. You could look at YouTube, you know, make sure it's really easy to build a YouTube channel, add a profile to it, um, and you have a channel for your business, okay? Um, so build that, it's easier. But other broadcast elements you use, you can put video out there. Okay, so this is example of video marketing here. You can put video up. It's really easy to do with modern tools and techniques, so you can put video up. You could do a podcast series. Podcasts are really still very popular, and we can use them. Webinars, fantastic. You can use webinars. You can do live events to get out there. So you can use social media to promote your webinars, your live events, your podcasts, your videos, all that sort of stuff. You can still use TV and radio. Um, and again, you can link your social media to it. So as long as you're using this stuff in concert, you can even use print as a broadcast media, putting stuff out there, drawing people back into your social media and your digital marketing strategy. But I think the market is moving very heavily towards video, podcasts, webinars, these sorts of events. Um, and therefore, you know, we need to think those through. I guess we're creating content. So, you know, I, my my strategy here is to recycle, refurbish, and repurpose stuff. So, example, you know, write a blog article, post it on on your website. You then create a short video of that blog, which you then post on your website. But you also post it on your YouTube channel. Well, actually, you show post it on YouTube first. All right. You could then create the video, use the video to create a podcast. Yeah, which is an audio thing. So you could you could hang that off your website, and you can also sell it through iTunes or. Um, have it delivered via, via iTunes or various other Spotify and other places, right? You could then create a detailed webinar of that blog article. So you could do a long-form video. So really a webinar is just a long-form video. So you could do a long-form video, which could be public, or you could do it privately, okay? So you've created some old, some stuff here. Um, you know, there are four things you could do really easily from the one piece of content. One blog article has given you a video, um, it's given you a podcast and it's given you a webinar program, all right? So the other thing you think about is is because social media is inherently transient, right? So if I don't log in for a week or two, I've probably missed everything you've put on social media. And therefore, we're relying on people being in there regularly to see our stuff coming up. Now, what that means is that you can actually repost some of your old content, particularly stuff that was popular earlier, maybe update it if you like, but repost it again and get some some... Um, get some more mileage out of that same content. So I guess you're refurbishing it again uh, or recycling it if you like. Um, and, and then you can spin your article. So spin is where you take a blog article and you might put um, a slightly different um, twist on it or you might just change the language in it so that it effectively looks like another blog article on exactly the same topic enough to, to fill the, uh, the algorithms for Google and stuff so that you don't get pinged for, for putting multiple content up, you can then go and place that and have in, uh, in other places some of those backlink things that we talked about earlier to give you some more, some more um, I guess, some more content out in the marketplace. All right, so this is how, how I, I do it, you know, write a blog article, I then, I then develop a, a video which I put onto YouTube, so I put that up onto YouTube. I also then have, have a video page on my website, so that same video comes back down here. I will then embed that video back inside the um, uh, back inside the blog article, and therefore I'm getting a lot more um, information from it. Um, and uh, and then I can also build um, another another webinar. So um, really really powerful way to get a lot of mileage out of um, a single product. All right. So going to suggest you now just press press pause. And think about how can you use broadcast media to expand your reach, particularly using social media. Okay? When you answer that question, press play and we'll go again. All right. Start to build your plan. Down here we should be setting some, some 
clear actions and strategies in this broadcast area. You should be getting some 90-day actions over here that you're, going, that you're going, to, going to work on. All right, the next steps for you are to line up for our, our next video. More importantly, are to go back and review the previous four, five videos to start getting your head around some of the areas that you need to focus on. Maybe you need to engage some professionals to help you in different areas um, or at least do some more learning to get your skills up in different places. Okay, as usual, really happy to help you with any questions. There's a book a 10 minute call with Russ link on this page. So um, please go there and book a call with me. I'm happy to answer any question you've got. Also happy to talk to you about um, how we may be able to help you take your business to that next level. Okay, have a great week and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.